Dinosaurs are, without a doubt, the most impressive creatures that ever lived on our planet. They rained on the land. However, the oceans covered much bigger areas. Let us ask a question. Who lived in the oceans back then? For millions of years, life in the oceans evolved according to its own laws and created fascinating creatures. That's what we're going to discuss today. Who lived in the ocean during the times of dinosaurs? The Triassic period spanned about 51 million years, from the end of the Permian 251.9 million years ago to the beginning of the Jurassic 201.36 million years ago. It began after a major biological cataclysm the Permian-Triassic extinction. The Triassic is of central importance in terms of the origin of modern ecosystems, because on its onset marks the end of Paleozoic and the origin and expansion of modern evolutionary fauna. New types of corals formed in the marine environment. They were much smaller than today. In the early Triassic, they clung desperately together to form reef patches occupying their biological niche. The shell-shaped cephalopod mollusks, the Ammonoidea, barely survived the great extinction. Only single species left out of many. They quickly replenished lost numbers and gave a wide variety of offshoots. Scientists still find many fossilized remains. If we look at the fossils, they resemble modern nautilus. Indeed, they are close relatives, but their periods are distant from each other. The shape of Ammonoidea shells is a striking example of beauty and harmony of nature. The shell spirals of each mollusk correspond exactly to the very golden proportion, which can be observed almost everywhere in nature as a beauty code. It had an influential effect on many cultures. In medieval Europe, Fossil ammonoidea were thought to be coiled snake rings. That is why people call them snake stones and believed in their magic healing properties. In the Triassic period, the oceans were inhabited by many species of fish. However, much more interesting creatures were marine reptiles. In particular, Pachypleurosaurs and Nothosaurus, both of which were common in the Middle Triassic especially in the waters of the Tethys Ocean. There were also many Placodontias, Plesiosaurs, and lizard-like Escheptosaurus. The first Ichthyosaurs appeared in the Triassic and spread rapidly almost all over the world's oceans. Ichthyosaurs were not dinosaurs, but represent a separate group of marine vertebrates. They shared the seas of the world with the other great groups of large marine reptiles, the Plesiosaurs and Mosasaurus. The environment was unusually favorable, a perfect balance between available food and dangerous enemies. Ichthyosaur means literally fish lizard. The name is quite apt because they looked like a combination of fish and reptile. The earliest Ichthyosaurs had long flexible bodies and probably swam by undulating like living eels. More advanced ichthyosaurs had compact, very fish-like bodies with crescent-shaped tails. Ichthyosaurs appeared in the early Triassic. Because ichthyosaurs were so specialized and modified for life in the ocean, we don't really know which group of vertebrates were their closest relatives. They might have been an offshoot of the diapsids, the great vertebrate group, or descended from a distant relative of the turtles. If the last memory is true, then it was a return to the ocean. Evolution did regressions many times. Millions of years later, the same happened when land mammals returned to the sea and evolved into dolphins and whales. The shape of these ichthyosaurs is like that of living tunas and mackerels, which are the fastest fish in the ocean. Like them, the later ichthyosaurs were built for speed. We can also compare the ichthyosaurs to the dolphins. Ichthyosaurs actually gave birth to live, well-developed young. Ichthyosaurs never had to leave the water to lay eggs. 
they still breathed air and lacked gills. In the 90s and in 2012, Japanese scientists finally proved that ichthyosaurs were warm-blooded too. Ichthyosaurs were about two to four meters long on average. Due to most favorable environment, some species reached enormous sizes as they evolved. The largest one is the Shonisaurus that grew to 15 meters. The record belongs to a Shonisaur, Shastasaurus, that boasted a length of 21 meters. The Triassic began with the largest mass extinction in Earth history and ended with a series of substantial extinctions. The extinction was most widespread in the oceans. Marine reptiles almost entirely disappeared. A few species of plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs survived. Invertebrates such as brachiopods and mollusks, especially gastropods, suffered a great deal. An entire class of conodonts, sea eels, disappeared completely. It is roughly estimated that between 23% and 34% of entire marine life disappeared. What caused the end Triassic extinction remains to be determined. Some scientists blame huge and widespread volcanic eruptions as a trigger. Some 200 million years ago, an increase in atmospheric CO2 caused acidification of the oceans and global warming that killed off 76% of marine and terrestrial species on Earth. Other scientists blame asteroid or comet impacts. Indeed, one of the largest craters on the planet, Manicouagan Reservoir in Quebec, dates back to a late Triassic period. Later, radiometric dating placed it about 13 million years earlier than the Triassic-Jurassic extinction event. Anyway, the mass extinction created the vacant ecological niches, which immediately was taken by surviving species. This devastating event cleared the way for dinosaurs to dominate the Earth for the next 135 million years. Many new dinosaurs emerged in great numbers on land and ocean. The Jurassic period spanned from 199.6 million to 145.5 million years ago. The Jurassic was a time of significant global change in continental configurations, oceanographic patterns, and biological systems. During this period, the supercontinent Pangaea began to split apart into large northern continent Laurasia, and the southern continent, Gondwanaland. The Jurassic was characterized by a warm, wet climate that gave rise to lush vegetation and abundant life. The beginning of the Jurassic was conventionally marked by a temperature spike, corresponding to the eruption of huge volcanoes of the Central Atlantic Magmatic Province. Ocean surface temperatures during this period are thought to have exceeded 30 degrees Celsius. The equatorial and subtropical zones were so arid that life was literally squeezed either into northern and southern latitudes or into the ocean. Later, the species that survived the late Triassic extinction began to bounce back in the early Jurassic. The devastated ecosystems of tropical reefs gradually began to recover. Brachiopods were numerous and diverse. They are marine mammals with two shells, an upper one and a lower one. The right and left halves of each shell are mirror images. They moved into a new niche and remained almost unchanged throughout the Jurassic period. Echinoderms proliferated in great numbers, shapes and colors. Even today, they're very diverse and include starfish, brittle stars, sea cucumbers, sea urchins, sand dollars, and crinoids. And at this time, this riot of shapes and colors was simply incredible. The Jurassic period was great for the development of crustaceans. It was then that the first real crabs appeared. Fossil hermit crabs date back to at least the early Jurassic 200 million years ago. To protect themselves, hermit crabs search for abandoned shells. When they find one that fits, they tuck themselves inside it for protection and carry it with them wherever they go. 
This habit of living in a borrowed shell gave rise to the hermit crab's name. Ammonoideas were ocean-dwelling mollusks, especially cephalopods. They were devastated by the late Permian extinction. However, they recovered fairly quickly to evolve and change. In fact, they repeated the success scenario of the Triassic period. What about the ichthyosaurs that dominated the oceans of the Triassic? They too had a tough time during the Great Extinction, but managed to squeeze through the bottleneck of evolution. Due to evolutionary advantages, ichthyosaurs became the kings of the ocean again in the early Jurassic and reached the peak of species diversity. The Jurassic period was the heyday of the Temnodontosaurus. It was a formidable predator whose name translates from the Greek as lizard with slashing teeth. Indeed, it has a huge body, up to 9 or even 12 meters long, big mouth with sharp teeth, huge eyes up to 25 centimeters in diameter. Its formidable size inspired fear in the sea inhabitants of those days. Urinosaurus is one member of what still appears to be a small group of ichthyosaurus that had specialized asymmetrical jaws. Judging by its bite and other characteristics, scientists concluded that the urinosaur followed exactly the same predatory strategy as a swordfish. The elongated upper jaw with thick, sharp teeth was used as a weapon to attack potential prey from the back. During the Jurassic period, the dominance of the ichthyosaurs was threatened by the competing species, plesiosaurs. However, they could compete only in size. Plesiosaurs are ancient marine reptiles. They appeared in the late Triassic and grew in numbers during the Jurassic period. Six types of plesiosaurs cross the Triassic-Jurassic barrier and give a powerful push to their evolution. Plesiosaurs, though predators, fed mostly on mollusks and fish. Only the largest species could afford to diversify their diet with sharks and other plesiosaurs. In turn, they could become prey to the sharks, which were numerous in the Jurassic period. This period lasted from about 145 to 66 million years ago. It is the longest, third and final period of the Mesozoic era when dinosaurs dominated the land. The planet was ice-free, with forests stretching to the poles. However, the Jurassic saw some cooling trends and they escalated in the early Crustaceous. Snowfalls were common at the higher latitudes, and the tropics got wetter than in the Triassic and Jurassic periods. Ocean life was still as diverse as in the Jurassic. There is no huge difference between these periods. Ichthyosaurs flourished, but only in the early and middle Crustaceous. Toward the end of the period, they did go extinct. They did not survive the so-called oxygen-free event, when the level of oxygen dropped to zero in the world's oceans. There were a few such events in the history of our planet, and all of them had the most dramatic effect on the biosphere. Marine reptiles survived the entire Crustaceous period without any problems. More families appeared in the late Crustaceous, one of them, Mosasaurus. Modern Varanas are their direct, though distant, descendants. Mosasaurus breathed air, were good swimmers, and were well adapted to life in the warm, shallow inland seas during the late Crustaceous. As the ichthyosaurs became extinct, the Mosasaurus took its place and became the dominant marine predators. Some representatives reached a length of 13 to 17 meters. Back then, there were reptiles which managed to lead aquatic and land lifestyles very well. The most striking example of such combination is Spinosaurus. It was one of the most spectacular carnivorous dinosaurs in the history of the amazing reptiles. It was quite huge as for a predator. The largest representatives reached, according to estimates, from 12 to 16 meters and weighed up to 12 tons or more. The reptile had webbed feet and a characteristically shaped tail which made it a fast and agile swimmer. The size and shape of dorsal and caudal vertebrae formed a kind of sail, which presumably served as a hydrostabilizer. 
Little by little, the oceans and seas of the planet began to look more like what we have now. Stingrays, fish, and sharks were common back then. The Aminoidea reached its peak. They grew huge in size at the end of the Crustaceous. The largest one, Parapozoia sepinridensis, lived during the late Crustaceous period in marine environments in what is now Westphalia, Germany. A specimen was found in Seppenrad in Ludinghausen, Germany, in 1895. It measured 1.8 meters in diameter, being not even a complete shell, but only a part. It is estimated that the size of the Aminoidea was about 2.5 meters. You can see it on display at the Westphalian Museum of Natural History in Münster, Germany. The End of Era 66 million years ago. It sounds like a verdict. A verdict of mass extinction. The Crustaceous Paleogene, KPG, extinction event, also known as the Crustaceous Tertiary Extinction, was a sudden mass extinction approximately 66 million years ago. All non-avian dinosaurs disappeared. The marine reptiles, including Mosasaurus, Ichthosaurus, and Plesiosaurs, Sauropsidas, and the flying reptiles, including pterosaurs, went extinct too. Even the Aminoidea, which miraculously survived the previous extinctions, were gone forever too. All the ecosystems were completely destroyed. About three quarters of the plant and animal species on Earth went extinct. Of the quadrupeds, not a single species with an average weight greater than 25 kilograms survived. The Crustaceous period was over, and it ended the Mesozoic era. It didn't happen in one day. It took many millennia. The reason of extinction is not determined. That is why scientists still debate over it. <laughs>